Hello guys and welcome to a rather different video with myself because you can see myself, you can see me talking actively to the video etc. So this video is going to be all about setting up a stream and on top of that also being able to upload recordings from a stream in a good quality that is what we are after. We're aiming for the best quality on your stream and the best quality on your YouTube videos at minimum effort for you. That's exactly what I'm in to help. So first things first, you're gonna need a good live streaming software and a good video recording software. My biggest suggestion is this. If you have a NVIDIA card, get GeForce Experience. This is gonna be something called Shadow Play. It's exactly what I'm used to record this video and essentially it records the past. It's gonna save so much data on your PC because you're never gonna to have to save stuff unless you like it. You just set a keyframe on there, you click Alt F10 for mine and boom, it saves the clip as has happened. I can then upload that or edit it accordingly in an appropriate software. Softwares are expensive, but there are some cheaper ones out there. Wondershare, a really nice one for basic editing. Um, that sort of replaced Windows Movie Maker. And then if you do have a bigger bankroll, you can go for things like Adobe Movie Maker and Sony Vegas Pro, which is what I use personally. Adjust it accordingly. Um, plenty of options out there. So for your Twitch software, this is where the big stuff comes in. Open Broadcaster software is my top dog favorite. It's an older software. It's, it's sort of the predecessor of Open Broadcaster Studio, but I think it sets itself up a lot better. There are a couple extensions you will have to get to make things perfect, but generally speaking, it's very, very, very nice. So we're gonna go through a lot of the settings here, but one final thing to mention about videos before we move on to Twitch particularly, which is gonna be the focus of this, is if you cannot record with a good software because you don't have a video card, there is another option. You can get this bad boy down the bottom, which is quite literally called Twitch Leecher. So what this does is it records your past broadcasts anywhere. So you just load a Twitch video up, you extract the file from there for X percentage of that stream, and you have the video, the audio, the lot. As long as the audio isn't muted by Twitch for copyright purposes, you have the use of that video. If you're using someone else's files, do note that you obviously have to agree to copyrights because otherwise you are breaching terms and conditions. But if it's your own files, you have full rights to those clips, you are more than welcome to use them. And this software is a really good way to extract those files accordingly. It's very easy to use. You literally just click on it. Um, you'll upload the video and yeah, it's that basic search video, paste it in, and it will start downloading according to the timestamp you set. Really that simple. On to Twitch. So we're gonna go into the most key thing to start, which is your settings. In the settings, there's a lot of things that you're not gonna change at all. There are a few things you're going to have to change to get a good quality, and that is exactly what we're here for, good quality streams, because too often, at least on my game, Elder Scrolls Online, you see a lot of people who have fantastic content, great entertainment, they're very skilled at the game, good interaction, got everything going for them in Twitch, they'll be a good success, except their quality sucks because you know they haven't set things up properly, they're lagging, they've got pixels flying everywhere, the connectivity's rubbish, all of that. We're gonna make that a no-brainer by going through it step by step. So first things first, obviously set your language, no brainer at all. And then we move on to the encoding section. So if you do have a good graphics card, you can set that in here. Uh, sorry, video card. I would personally suggest against that. I think that you don't really see much of a change. Go for the X264 encoder. That's an automatic setting and click use CBR and enable CBR padding. Very, very generic. It'll do most of the stuff itself. But the big bit here is going to be your bit rate because your bit rate is absolutely vital and it's the most important setting for you to get right in the whole of this video. If there's anything you take in, it's the max bit rate. What that max bit rate is basically doing is it's determining the rate that I personally upload my stream onto Twitch. And that obviously is going to determine the lag. How to determine that we get good quality is to make sure we don't put that unnecessarily high or too low. It's a balance of both. There's a simple way to work that out, which is look at your internet speed. That's easy to do. Go to speedtester.net or any other internet speed site. Check the upload speed on there, not the download. It is the upload you want. And then go to a factor of about 60%. So let's imagine my upload is 10. The max I would want to put here for the bit rate is 6,000. However, I would not really bother going above 3000 because you honestly don't notice the difference. I've, I mean, you can see my stream, I've got no delay on my hand movement. 
apart from the obviously inborn win um, webcam stuff. I've got no pixels anywhere. The quality is very sexy and that's what after. So why put it higher? I've never seen any difference putting it higher. If you are on a slow internet, and this is particularly applicable to English people because our internet is garbage most of the time. I have to get optic to stream. Um, you can actually still do this. You're going to lower your quality a little bit, but it's still completely watchable. Far better than a lot of the stuff you'll see. So you want to set that max bit rate to 1000. And then we're going to do a different setting in a sec that I'll show you to improve the lag problem. So 1000 is going to still give you enough to get a reasonable quality. And then we can adjust it there. The reason, by the way, that we go 60% on our upload speed is you've got a lot of other things impacting there. If you've got YouTube playing music in the background or Spotify, or anything like that. If you've got family, um, even your natural internet background costs some sort of upload time. If anything is open on the internet, all of that is going to impact on your upload and you do not want to suppress your upload because if you are over that, you are going to lag like crazy and your stream is going to be rubbish. So get that quality right. Just adjust it accordingly. All you've got to do is click the preview exactly as I've done and you'll be able to adjust that easily. Next is going to be our broadcast setting. So first thing first, obviously we're going to set this to live stream. It's probably going to automate to that. But the big thing is to make sure you've set the right stream service because there are other ones out there. I would suggest Twitch. It's where I am. Come join the party. But hey, each to your own. And then you're going to want to set this. This is really important because it's going to determine where you're uploading to. I am English. Therefore, I set the URL to London. It's my closest station. But let's imagine that you are from, I don't know, France, you'll probably set Paris and etc. Set it to the one that's close to you. You're going to get the best quality. Easy enough to do. Next is going to be your stream key. So this you are going to get from your dashboard on your Twitch. I can't actually show you how to get this because it's against Twitch terms and conditions. But all you've got to do is go onto your dashboard, go into your settings and then copy and paste it. It's very easy to find a fair few guides on YouTube and Twitch itself on how to find that. Once it's in there, that's all you've got to do. Just copy paste it. It does the rest itself. Final thing you want to change it is your replay buffer length. You want to set this to one. I'm not going to lie, no idea what this does, but changing it from two to one, what it's going to automate on, is a different scenario completely. It's, it's miles better. I don't know what it's doing, but it really did change the quality of the stream. Next is going to be video. So this is where if you are a slower streamer, I'm going to help your improvement of quality slightly. And if you are a really good streamer, good internet, etc., you're just going to get good quality off the bat. You want to click custom. Click your video adapter and set it to your key adapter. So for me, that's minor video. If you do have two cards, set it to your strongest. Set it custom and set this to 1920, 1080. And obviously, if you do have multiple monitors, set that to the appropriate one. Then, if you are lagging, firstly, look at your bit rate. Is it excessive? Can I drop it? Yes. Good. Good start. Next, we're going to look at our FPS. I set that to 30 because 60 FPS, you can look at me now. There's no delay on my movement. I could turn, etc. Why set it to more? My game performance is generally around 30. Anyway, if you do have a good PC, you could set that to 60, which is about sort of speed the human eye is going to see. Um, adjust that accordingly. That's going to be your next step. If you are still lagging, we move on to the key setting here. The godmother of all Twitch and OBS, which is resolution downscale. So what this is going to do is it's going to scale down the quality by a set factor. Imagine you have really good resolution and it's lagging. Good. Drop the resolution. You're not going to run it. It's no point trying. Your stream's going to suck. It's going to lag. So lower the quality. I would suggest going to 720 first and then looking at your bit rate. If it's still really laggy, even with a bit rate lower than 1,000, I wouldn't really go there. Lower it down to 540. Um, I'm afraid to say that if it's lower than that, you're probably really looking at getting a better internet. And yeah, that can be tough, but it should be easy to run that basically. There's definitely settings in there that are easily adjusted. Nothing of the rest in there is going to get touched. Audio, all you're going to have to do here is make sure you set your auxiliary microphone and recording as appropriate. So for me, that's my Yeti. Uh, just by here, trust little dude. But adjust that accordingly. Now, when you do that, you also want to go right click on your speaker icon and go into playback devices and recording devices and set your primary for those as the appropriate thing. So for me, again, that's Yeti. Set it accordingly. Plenty of guides out there to how to do that. If you do need that, I can easily make a video. So feel free to ask. Nothing's going to change there, but in advanced, we're going to change a few things here. So first is to change your scene buffering time to around 700. It's probably going to automate around there, but it does make a difference. This is basically adjusting the time between transition on screen where it's actually able to see stuff. So your scenes are your different 
areas in Twitch, you can see just below this, I've got main game intro outro, uh, just below defaults. And those are basically the two different scenes. I'll show those and explain that in a sec. Apart from that, we're not going to adjust too much. Keyframe interval, you want to set to two. Don't change that to anything else. And then your CPU preset, you want to set to very fast. Again, if your PC is not fast, you may want to drop that down. I would not go any lower than medium. So if you go on slow or slower, it's going to be a bit laggy. It's not going to look that great. Um, just kind of get a, a feel for how confident you are in your PC and adjust that accordingly. It's very easy to test though. Just literally where you see stop preview at the bottom of my screen. Click that, reset it up. Click preview again as I did before to see this and you'll be able to see a stream. So that's going to let you know how you are. Nothing else is going to change in it apart from our latency tuning factor. 20 seems to do me good. Just copy it. All I can suggest, again, no idea what that does, but it has helped. And that's basically it for your settings. So nice and easy there. After that, we're going to make sure the microphone and speakers are on. Only one way to test this, which is to start a test stream. Get a few friends in there to watch that stream and they can tell you, turn the volume up, turn the mic up, and you just adjust the ratio. So for me, my normal volume is just about here, 90% on the speakers and 100% on the mic with my general YouTube setting as it is right now. So that's how I get good settings there. Now, how to create your scene as it is right now on screen. First things first, you're gonna go, wanna go on here and go add scene. I've already got one which is my main game. So we call that whatever you wanna do and then we're gonna work from there. From there, you're gonna want to first of all add your game because that's what you're gonna have is your back image. Nothing's gonna go behind that because otherwise you're not gonna see it and your game is likely full screen. So you're gonna need it full screen. Add that first, but you can obviously, if you want, adjust the order. So let's imagine that for whatever reason, no one liked my face and I wanted to move it in front of the blobby. All I would do is go on order and I'd go move down and order and move up accordingly. So that will change where we actually see those if you don't put them in the right order. This one is not gonna matter, uh, don't worry about that one. But what we are also then gonna wanna do is gonna add your alerts. So alerts are things that are basically gonna tell you if a donation comes in, follower, sub, whatever's appropriate for your level of streaming. Very easy to set up. All you're gonna go is go onto Streamlabs. That's the one that I use. It explains everything there very, very well. You're not gonna need me to explain that. But again, if you do, tell me, I can make a guide on it. Pretty easy to do. It will require an extension called CBR Browser, or CLR Browser, I think it is. Here we go, CLR Browser. That's basically going to use online files as an extraction point. Uh, don't entirely understand it, but again, Streamlabs will explain how to set that up. Our overlay will be your next layer. So this is something, as you see here with the blue, just where I am, sort of around the edge here. Set this up as you like. You don't have to have this, especially as a newer streamer, it doesn't really matter. But it does look professional. It likes to keep the screen clean. My biggest suggestion if you make one of these is keep it simple. The more complicated it is, the more clustered the screen is, and it just starts to look ugly. Keep a very, very simple profile, and it will look far more professional. I know it gets exciting to make all these fancy effects, but in the end, it just takes away from the appeal of the stream itself. I'd suggest against it myself. Webcam next, this is pretty easy to set up. You just go to right click, add capture device as so. So we go right click, add a video or game capture or whatever. There we go, video capture device and pick the webcam. Then you just adjust it as accordingly. Very easy to do that. Um, Sub count template is a part of my overlay, so that's the blobby that comes in front of my screen. So if you do want to set up something similar to mine, where you've got a background drop, the webcam, and then something up there to add onto it, you just add that on top of it. All of this is pretty much just alerts at that point. Now, that's basic, obviously, but how are we going to do anything with that? We've put it all on here, it looks rubbish, it's out of size. So what we're going to go is going to go on edit scene. And what I'm going to do is let's imagine that I wanted to make my webcam bigger. I click edit scene, click the appropriate thing either on screen or we can click it here like so. Click the corner and drag accordingly. So if I wanna look big and sexy on full screen, yes, Tom, there we are. If we think that's too obstructive, we just scroll it down to the appropriate point. If we wanna move it, just click on the center point and we can wheel around and that is really that simple. So nothing wrong there. That's basically it for setting up a Twitch. It really is that simple. One final thing to mention, which is how to set up transfer scenes. So I don't actually know yet how to set up something that transfers one scene to another. What I do know how to do is set up a video. So there are guides for this on YouTube, but just to give you a quick demonstration, 
All I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my outro. This will be a different scene. So we go right click add scene. And then in there, we would set a different thing, which is a video capture. You're going to have to get an extension to actually do that. But what that's going to do is it's going to play a file from your desktop or a file from online as a YouTube file. Now note that that is going to have sound in it. You are not going to know the volume if you have saved it with sound. I've saved mine with sound. I would actually suggest not to do that so you can vary the music. Um, it really is going to depend how confident you are getting the volume right. But yeah, I think that's basically it, guys. Now, final thing to mention is what to do with your YouTube footage. So we've made our stream. We've got some great content. and We've saved it with NVIDIA. We've edited it all up nice and sexy in Sony Vegas. If you want any guides on how to do that, I can actually do that. I think I'm pretty reasonable with it. Not insane, but I'm reasonable. But how are we actually going to upload that and maintain quality? And this is very easy. What I'll do here, just to quickly show you how to do this as well, is I'm going to go add text. And what we're going to type here is as follows. YouTube dot dot quality equals high and YouTube dot dot stretch equals 16 dot dot nine. That is going to make sure that your video fits the scaling of your screen appropriately and maintains high quality on transfer. Though obviously the way you render that with your editing software is going to matter as well. Those comments, those things that I too wrote there, all you're going to do is put those in your tags. It's that easy. So when I make a YouTube video, you obviously have your tags whatever people search will go in there but some of those are process tags and that's what these two are and that will affect the quality we actually upload in and the render quality etc well i hope that was useful guys if i did miss anything feel free to ask but it's simple enough it really is that easy to set up i've had a lot of requests like i said not necessarily in elder scrolls videos specifically which many of you like to see i know but it's good to have some more streamers out there get involved um, in terms of getting successful on Twitch, I really don't think that there's much to it. I, I really think that as long as you've got good quality, you're interactive, you're entertaining, that's a big key thing. Skill at the game matters, but isn't essential. Your quality's good, that's where it all comes in. You have a chance, but make sure that you have enough viewers in the first place. So let's imagine that you are on Fortnite, a huge game. The first three pages are all gonna have above 300 viewers. If you don't have above that, you're not really gonna have the space to grow. But a game like Elder Scrolls is great for growth because there's not so many huge streamers. In fact, there's no huge streamers, there's some bigger ones, there's some medium ones, and a lot of small ones. And let's imagine that rank six is 27 viewers. Rank seven might just be five viewers. Rank one, two, three might be huge, who knows? But all you've gotta to do to get there is get a few friends to watch you. That's Tom's top tip. Get some friends to watch you, just five, six friends, and it puts you on the radar. Because if there's nobody watching you, nobody's necessarily going to join. If there are people watching you, suddenly you've got an interest. And yeah, they don't have to be watching you actively. They could just be AFK. You've now got people watching you. Uh, you've got a good quality stream. You're ready to rock on Twitch, guys. Good luck with the streaming. Good luck with the YouTube. And if you ever want any advice, you are always welcome to approach me in the stream comments. My Discord, YouTube, Twitch, wherever it may be. Not a problem at all. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope this was helpful and interesting. Peace out, guys.